Good evening, London. I'm fortunate to be with you tonight because my friends call me an energy enthusiast. Well, I don't know how it happened. I can tell you that when I was a kid, I didn't dream to be in energy. Indeed, if you ask any kid, what do you want to do when you grow up? No one would answer, energy. <laughs> Unlike in tech, in sport, in politics, in energy, we have no Steve Jobs. No Schumacher, no Obama to look at. Yet, energy is so important. Everything from medicine to food production is made possible by access to it. And we need people to dream of it. We need to know who our leaders are because they shape our tomorrow. Today, we'll precisely try to answer this question. Who are the energy leaders of our future? And to answer, I want to take you on a journey through history and look at our current reality with a new perspective. Until not long ago, humans had nothing more than wood for eating and animal like horses for transportation. The first energy developments happened when men learned to use the forces of nature. Wind and water power life-changing innovations. Mills helped food production, pumps progress irrigation, and caravels sail the oceans, expanding our horizons. In 1698, one man called Thomas Savory invented the steam engine, which trigger the age of coal. And more relevant for all of us today, the fast industrial revolution, which made England, not America at the time, great again. <laughs> and finally, over the last century, we enter the oil era. Actually, does anyone know what oil was first used for? Crazily, it entered the market as a medicine, and after a few failed therapies, it became the dominant commodity of our time, complemented by a bit of nuclear and gas. I told you the story not to show how energy shaped or changed our life, but because all these faces have something in common, the lack of choice for us users. If you think of it, what was the only energy our ancestors had? As technology developed, coal became the dominant commodity. It was more powerful than wood, more convenient than wind, and definitely less expensive than I had of horses. And uh, when we really, uh, fast forward, oil became the new coal, and it was used everywhere, from plastic production to jet fuel. Historically, we have really used one commodity at a time. Yet, if I ask you, where are we today? And in 10, in 20 years, who believes a new resource will monopolize that picture I've just seen? When you see all these lines getting market share, all these energies joining the show, this means no one dominant resource exists anymore. Energy diversification is the greatest untold achievement of our time. And the reason is that when uh, our nation, entire nations, run on one or two resources. Our society is in the hands of few powerful suppliers, when instead different resources compete to be more efficient, cheaper, greener, then our harmonized energy mix create resilient economies, stronger because less affected by shocked in price or supply of energy. And to see how all this relates to identifying our energy leaders, we need to move just one last step from the macro picture to the individual level. Because at the individual level is where diversification has its greatest impact. Energy diversification gives us energy democracy. This means we can now choose which energy to consume, when to consume it, and even whether to produce 
energy independently. These three choices can benefit each one of us. More options give us more competitive prices. But what's the wider impact? Our choices are already deciding which energy runs this planet, which can be the solution or the problem to many fundamental issues, including economic growth and climate change. I know this may sound distant to many of you, but if you think of it, thanks to technology, more and more people, rich or poor, are gaining the power to exercise an energy choice. Energy democracy is a global trend and is already reality for most of us in this room. Every day, we decide which energy to consume when we travel using an electric train, a diesel bus, or a car fueled by gasoline, biofuels, or even electricity. We decided which electricity to consume because our contract allow us to opt for a standard mix of so 100% green energy. And even more innovatively in the Netherlands, you can choose the precise source of your electricity among those available in your neighborhood. This means booking energy as you're booking your Airbnb lodging. <laughs> and when we pick our accommodation, we decide which energy we consume for cooking or eating. Many more alternatives will be available in the future. And the story doesn't end here. With this, we decide when to consume it. We can monitor our power use and even postpone it to the most convenient to cost-effective time. And if my examples on what to consume and when to consume does not convince you, imagine a village or a urban neighborhood harnessing wind, biomass, or even geothermal energy that fit the need of a whole community. Thanks to individual choices, in the UK alone, one million people install the energy producing technology on their property. And these are not numbers, are people. Here in this picture is my friend Luke with his family, proud of their newly installed solar panel and many more Lukes will follow as doing so will become easier. In short, energy was top down, now energy is bottom up. So what does it mean to answer our question? Who is the energy leader in an era of energy democracy? Wake up, my friends. Look at each other. You are the future energy leaders. Yes, you. It's a nice story to be superheroes with a planet to look after, isn't it? Yet, like in any nice story, we have an enemy. Ignorance. As with political democracy, ignorance is strengthening our energy democracy and our leadership. If we don't know what's going on in energy, we will find it difficult or uninteresting to choose. And if none of us cares about which energy, how much energy we consume, then someone else will decide for us and will be led into a new energy monopoly or a likely climate disaster. Let me ask you, how many of you have considered yourself an energy leader? Come on. Great. We have some leaders. <laughs> for the others, I hope it's more than more simply, how many of you agree that energy is an important issue? Come on. Great. Unfortunately, only one out of seven Europeans answer like you. And the reason that people don't know the people that answered that energy does not matter were the ones who did not even know basic energy concepts like energy saving or geothermal energy. Ignorance is undermining energy democracy. But 
if you want to preserve it and you want to chase this dream of uh, making of these a better planet, knowledge is key. I came to believe, assessing the impact of knowledge, that one energy class in our school would have more than 1,000 speeches on climate change. If we all buy into why it matters, you can be sure we will all choose for a better planet. My friends, if I can leave you with three action points about energy, educate yourself because you will need all your intelligence. Support your community by sharing knowledge and best practice. And choose. Choose wisely because your choice matters. Thank you, energy leaders.